Everybody else is. Yeah, okay. All right, well, we're going to do some shoulders and we're going to do some good stuff to move stuff through our emotional body because we've got a lot of water today um, going on. And uh, so lots going on. I mean, obviously, there's lots going on in the world to, that that would be enough to deal with. And, and, and the outer is always the, um, the reflection of the inner. So there's always a lot internally going on at the same time. And all that fire and wind is definitely disruptive to our nervous system. They call it Vata and Ayurveda, which makes us the mind go, which makes us feel kind of unsettled. Um, and so we might be dealing with that. Also, we have a transit going on where we could be feeling a little bit of hopelessness or just a lot of lethargy and tiredness. Um, we have the sun um, opposite Neptune. So whereas there is a chance to dream to, to, for potential for us to think of creative solutions to continue to move the improvement energy forward, it's also a place to get lost in hope, hopelessness, despair, depression, um, escapism, right? All those things are also on the flip side of that. So you might be feeling tired. Um, Mars went retrograde on Wednesday. And Mars is that planet of our desire and our action. And so when it goes retrograde, it's a good time to slow down because we have to inspect our motivations to continue to see if they're aligned with what it is that we're, the greater picture of what we're trying to create in our lives. So old stuff can come up that we want to, that like when we're nervous or, or antsy that we, Maybe fill our day with being really busy instead of, you know, kind of consciously working through what we need or doing the things for ourselves that we need. So it's just a good time to slow down and to really keep asking, why am I doing what I'm doing? And is it feeling like it's moving me in the right direction? So it's just a good time to be really mindful of that. And everyone will be feeling that in different places. Could be your work life, could be personal life, could be health, right? Just asking those an extra question, why? And um, is this leading to more of my vitality and joy? Those are always good things to, to work with. But the good news is, is Jupiter is going direct today. Uh, and so with that planet moving direct, we start to feel a little bit more forward momentum. Um, and we start to be able to move towards like greater uh, potentials within ourselves. Because Jupiter is that planet of the meaning behind why we're here on Earth and, and kind of the things that we do that feel really meaningful. So we've been in a reflection period of that and that moves direct. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, so let's work with it today. Um, so we're working through our, our poses that each of you are choosing, and we're trying to work through greater health and vitality through awareness of our digestion. So we'll continue to work our twists today um, and using those twists to kind of clean out, right, all that energy that we process. And one of the themes that I was suggesting for this week is that redirecting and focus because it can be really overwhelming to take in everything that's going on in the world, right? To feel like we just get lost in that. And so it's um, nice at times to refocus on what can I do? And in this moment with what I'm choosing, what can I do for myself, for the planet, for those in need? Um, what can I do right now? And how do I then like focus the energy into something productive? So we're not just worrying and stressed and and feeling overwhelmed, right? So that was the mudra we, we talked about this week was the focus and concentration mudra to kind of draw it in. So we'll work with that too. So wherever you find yourself this morning, take a nice comfortable seat. Go ahead and give yourself a spritz of aromatherapy. So you can allow yourself to enter a space and to create space, intentional space. And then go ahead and rest your palms open to be more receptive, to close down kind of that perception, hands can be down or you can switch. And take a couple moments to just meet yourself fully in whatever experience you're finding. Whether you're feeling that slowing down of energy, whether you feel the speeding up because of the stress or worry, somewhere along there, tired. Really the practice of yoga is to continue to show up with whatever it is that we show up with. And as we continue to show up and we still do the work of our practice, right? It develops what we call tapas, which is this internal fire and this internal discipline, this internal strength and fortitude to be able to work through whatever it is that shows up with us each day on the mat. 
So we don't always show up to feel better, although that can be a name, right? We show up to be able to say, I, I won't give up. I will continue to show up and breathe and move and do what I can. And sometimes we leave the mat, we feel better, and sometimes we just notice how bad we might have really felt. And that's all part of continuing to show up. And so I celebrate each one of you that chose to show up today. So just breathing into your purpose for being here. Whatever purpose you have, whether it's just to show up and you don't even know anything past that, or you want to offer your efforts towards something. Almost donating your efforts towards a cause, towards people, towards an aspiration. And then we'll join our hands to other heart, and we're going to chant uh, just a cappello, uh, loka samasta suki no bhavantu. We'll do that three times, and that chant is may all beings be happy and free. And may my words, thoughts, and actions contribute to the happiness and freedom of myself and all other beings. And so let us work today to create more of that, whether it's just internally, an inch of more space that create, or it's through our minds or through what will direct our path today. So deep breath in. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Release your hands. And if you have that blanket that I suggested, two options for it. A block can be used too, it's just a little intense sometimes. You're gonna take that blanket and you're gonna roll it up really tightly so that it's tight and small. Option one, place in the hip crease and come towards a child's pose and just kind of let your head rest. I would say I'm maybe on a block so you can really be passive. And you're gonna have a little bit of myofascial release on the belly. So that's option one, and you could do this without the blanket. Option two would be lying on that blanket, right over like the belly line, so you're um, right above the pubic bone, below the ribs, and you're just gonna make a forehead pillow and get that myofascial release here. So we talked about during cancer season that the belly can hold a lot of emotional distress and tension. So we just wanna give an avenue to kind of release that out today so that we don't feel waterlogged. We don't feel kind of like the emotions get trapped in our body. Because that's when we tend to feel more lethargy or more of that hopelessness. And so just kind of moving that energy through so that we can again refocus on what we can do. Even if it's just we can practice yoga. So take some deep breaths, let your forehead get heavy. Feel the belly press into the blanket or even just the mat. And then pull back. Really just letting yourself settle. And I keep really going back to that kind of intention because there's so much swirling around and kind of chaotic frenetic energy that it can be helpful just to really settle into your own body, into your own experience, and into that silence or wisdom so that we're not directed by the frenetic, chaotic energy, but we're directed from a deeper place. It doesn't want to give up or just join the stress, but can take the next step in whatever that is. For five or six more deep breaths, just exhaling maybe through your mouth or sighing. That's going to be really healing to sigh. <sighs> Feel yourself get heavy. 
Feel your energy slow down. Imagining like sediment in a pond or in water kind of settling down to the bottom. And then two more breaths. And then slowly walking your hands back. If you have that blanket, just set it off to the side and you can move your block. I'm just kind of coming up and I'm just going to kneel just to kind of feel into just that release in my um, abdominal region. So just kind of noticing what's there with that. And then when you're ready, coming um, all the way down onto your hands and knees. Now taking a moment to just feel the earth beneath you through your feet, through your hands, and then tucking your toes under downward facing dog. So whatever you like to do in your down dog, whether it's pedal the legs, weight shift forward and back, lift and lowering the heels, just take a moment to enter that space. Being upside down. Deepening your breath. Feel your hips extend away from your hands, heels down, and feeling from your shoulders a reach through your hands. Nice deep breaths, two more. And then you're gonna in for, um, inhale, reach forward to plank, feel the belly engage, feel the heart space lift, exhale, knees down, child's pose. Inhale to all fours, tuck your toes under, exhale, down dog. Inhale, reach forward to plank, knees down, exhale, child's pose. We're going to start to move fluidly, so inhale, all fours, exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank, Knees down, exhale, child's pose. And you're just gonna keep going, so if you wanna go faster or slower than me, please do. Just allow yourself to move and breathe, letting the breath lead you. Connecting into your core. We'll do two more. And then last one. And then stay in child's pose. If you'd like to walk your hands a little bit further forward, go ahead and do that. Join your palms, let your elbows drop, and then bring your thumbs to the nape of your neck. And let that be felt as a nice little stretch through the sides of the body, through those shoulders. Let the head uh, settle towards the earth. And if you need a block, you can always put one underneath your forehead. Otherwise, just kind of let the top of the head touch, maybe. Feel those elbows reach out from the armpit area. And then go ahead and extend the hands forward, come back up to all fours here, and then go ahead and come back to downward facing dog. And nice and slowly walk your hands towards your feet at the back edge of your mat and bend those knees really generously so you can raise the body forward. And just little pulses, kind of like waving the body, you can sway if swaying feels better. Just kind of Imagine that you're shaking out anything through the spine that feels heavy. So let the legs feel solid and rooted, whether that means you bend your knees or widen your feet. Just kind of shake it out. Let your head bob up. Yes, no. Feeling still, uh, kind of that stability through the legs and that freedom through the arms. And then find a little stillness and feel kind of the buzzing of energy from all that movement. Maybe shake the head out again. And then direct the tailbone long, down towards your heels, pull the navel back and roll up nice and slow. 
Nice and slow, head, neck, and shoulders. And then roll those shoulders up, back and down a few times, like stirring the shoulders. So really feeling the shoulders in that circular motion, up, back, and down. So opening up the chest. And then go the other way. So shoulders go back, up, and forward. And then shaking out the shoulders of the arms. Let's take a little wider stance and warming up again through the arms and shoulders. We're going to go one arm at a time. So you're going to turn your palm to face forward and your arm's going to reach up. Then you're going to turn your arm to face back and it reaches out and away. So palm reaches up. You reach up, your shoulder elevates. Now turn your arm to face back and then reach it out and away. And then do this like three more times, like big shoulder circles. This kind of gives that shoulder that lubrication so that our shoulders don't feel gummy and tight. Now let's do two more. I get the snap, crackle, pop effect. <laughs> ah, yeah, and then just kind of shake it out on that side and we'll switch. So we turn the palm to face up and then we reach up. Then we turn the arm, rotating the forearm out and back and away. And I try and do this without a whole lot of movement through my center, so I'm not trying to turn the torso to do this action all through the shoulder. So depending on your, your uh, mobility and your shoulders, yeah, just kind of let that. Couple more. So kind of feeling them in isolation, shake it out. And now we'll do both, but we'll go opposites. So this is always, for me, like a brain teaser. <laughs> and so it may not be perfect, that's okay. Yeah, see, some of you can do it really good. And then we'll switch. And just kind of feeling that openness through the shoulders, getting all that creakiness out. Yeah, good. And then shake it out. Okay, we're gonna do our little energy routine. We've done this from time to time. And I just like this one to kind of remember, um, if I don't have time to do a full practice, if I just wanna do a little bit of movement, it kind of gets the spine moving in all those ways in the shoulders. So it can help just kind of move energy through your body. So you're gonna to come to a baby squat. So heels are nice and weighted. I feel heavy and nice and strong through my legs. And the arms are gonna go out. That's your inhale, and then the exhale, they come in, so forearms touch. So I go inhale, and I go exhale. So I go inter uh, external rotation, internal rotation. So inhale, and you can take the back of the hands together if you prefer. So let's keep going. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, chest lifts. Exhale, upper back rounds. Keep going. Strong weight through the legs. And you can move your spine like you're doing cat-cow. So you can either bend the forearms or you can keep them strong and open like I'm showing. Let's do three more. Big breath to the chest and to the back body. Two. And one more. And you're going to take that right arm and we're going to step out to the side. Open through your chest and then step the right arm behind, the right leg behind you as you stretch. Inhale. You can have your hand at your hip if you want. Exhale. Inhale. Big side stretch. Exhale. So get that whole right line from your ankle to your wrist. Stretching through the side. Pulling that arm wide. Reaching it up and over. One more will hold on the side stretch. So you can push down through your left palm and reach through your right. Press away from the earth and then come back together. So either right hand at your hip, left arm out, inhale, and then exhale. And then inhale, and exhale. Oh, really trying to open up. Two more. And then hold on this one, so press down with your right palm, reach up with your left, big stretch, let your head go. And release it out, nice, shake it out. So this next one is you're gonna turn to the uh, right on your inhale, 
the left on your exhale. And so as I turn to the right, I want to reach my right arm back so I get a chest stretch. That's the inhale and the exhale, you get a chest stretch to your left, okay? So it's rhythmic. Inhale, exhale. And I'm just going it in my legs. It can be a forceful exhale, like a breath of fire, or it can just be an open mouth exhale, whatever feels good. But as you're twisting the spine, let that breath kind of send a stagnant, old, heavy energy out. You got it. Keep going. Keep going on this one a little bit longer since we're working digestion. Five, four, three, two, and one. <sighs> Shake it out. Interlace your hands behind your back. So that can be an open arm clasp. It can even be hands at waist, shoulders back if clasping hyperextend your um, elbows. Inhale, lift the chest. And then exhale, bend the knees and pour forward. Feel your knuckles lift so that you open through the front of the chest. And as the knuckles dive towards the floor, keep the shoulders on your back so they don't roll towards your ears. Try to keep that openness through the chest. We're gonna flow with this one. So bend the knees, inhale, the arms come up. And then exhale, interlace the hands, fold forward. And again, you can go hands to the waist if that's better. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You can go slower if you need to, more inhale, exhale. One more. Hold here. Releasing your hands to the floor, bend your knees and roll up. Okay, so take a bigger step out so that you're in more of a horse pose. So toes out, heels in if you like. Two options to kind of, again, last little bit of releasing energy. One of them is to reach the arms up and then up, and you slap the floor. This is like a good stress reliever. Another one is imagine like you're chopping wood, arms come up and it's a So you can either tap the floor Slapping it down, or you can karate chop on the exhale. We're gonna strike 30 seconds. So before you keep going, if you're going, but just again, imagining any of that heavy stuck energy that you want to just release, letting this be like a cathartic, just kind of letting it go. <sighs> Forceful exhales through the mouth if you can. <sighs> you might even close your eyes so you can kind of channel and feel your energy. It doesn't have to be fast. It's just intentional. It will warm you up. Yeah, let it all go. I think Cam's going to break our floor in the other room. Okay. About five more seconds. And then, so in the last one, let it all come down, whether your hands are on the earth and you're in a low horse or you turn your toes forward and you're in a wide leg fold. Once again, just take some time, feel the energy buzzing. Kind of feel what's left moving around your body. And then once again, bend those knees, roll up nice and slow. Step a little closer together. Inhaling, bringing the, ar uh, the arms from the earth up to your heart. Exhaling, pushing it away. Bringing the energy towards your heart, grounding it down. Straighten your arms and legs, reach up, and then press that energy through the entirety of your body. Bring it from the earth to your heart, press it out, bring it towards you, ground it down. All the way up to standing, bring it all the way down your body. Last time, bring it from the earth to your heart, from the heart press away. 
from your heart or from the outside bring it in ground it down arms all the way up stretch this time bring it into your heart space and pause check in with your energy your body feel it out what's going on and then step towards the front of your mat wherever that is we'll start with a little surya little twisted surya so these are twists to kind of again continue the work that we're doing of releasing letting things pass and move inhaling arms reach up big stretch and then exhale forward fold come to a halfway lift stretch your spine and on the exhale step back with your right leg and come into a low lunge twist so you can put your knee down or keep your knee lifted the left arm will lift so there's lots of ways to twist you can have your hand at the small of your back i can have my knee down take three breaths here back left hip reaches back towards your right toes right thigh lifts if your knee is lifted one more breath and then take your hand down to the earth pressing into all fours or plank take a deep breath send your heart forward put your knees down for this first one keep your core really aligned and strong all the way down to the earth okay untuck your toes Firm them down, press your hands into the earth and pull back, heart lifts. And on the exhale, lower down. You have two more rolling cobras. So pull the hands back, lengthen your spine, lift up, lower down. And then one more time, shoulders on your back, reach back. And all the way down. And this time, go ahead and tuck your toes, keep your knees down, walk your hands back, lift your chest so that you get that kind of extra little lift, push into your hands, lift up to knee plank, lift your knees downward facing dog. Couple breaths here. And then one more nice deep breath in, nice deep breath out. Go ahead and lift that right leg up. Bring your right knee over to your left arm, drop it down to the floor, do a little tap. Lift it up even higher. Send your right leg up. Bend your knee, turn your thigh out, and roll your hip. So feel a twist here. Keep lifting through that left armpit, descending through your left heel. And then step your right leg forward between your hand and come into that low lunge twist points. I'm using a block. It can be any low lunge twist. Any low lunge twist. So either your knee down, your hand at the small of your back. Drive your right outer hip back and in towards your midline. Lift your left inner thigh up so you feel a sense of strength. You can even gaze down. One more deep breath. And on the exhale, both hands down, step and fold forward, top of your mat. Take a long spine, inhale, hands to shins or heart. Then root with your tailbone down towards your heels, press with those heels, arms reach up, hands to the heart. We'll go again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Long spine, inhale. Shoulders on your back. Exhale. Step your left leg back. Slow lunge. And again, you can change it. You can make it a high lunge. So I want you to do what you need. We're going to add on to this one. As you're ready, drop to the left knee. And you're going to tip up and back. So I'm going to touch my low back or my left thigh, and I'm gonna reach back as I look back. So I'm getting the hips on the left to move forward, and I'm turning and twisting. Okay, deep breath in, deep breath out. Cartwheel your hands down to the floor, and then as you're ready, we'll go to plank. Come forward, tips of your toes, knees down, lift your chest all the way down. Come to the tops of your feet, walk your hands wherever they need to be, elbows in like bird wings, shoulders on your back. Three times cobra, inhale, lift. Exhale more, try to get a little longer each time, so kind of pull those hands back and lift your chest forward. And then we'll do that one more time, it can be low. And then exhale, so tuck your toes, knees down, keep your chest lifted. Pull your navel back, knee plank to downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. Head gets heavy, heels get heavy. 
Lift your left leg up nice and slow. Feel the strength of your back chain. And then left knee towards the right. Let your knee touch the floor. Lift it back up. And then back to that left leg lifting. Bend your knee. Turn your thigh out. And then lift vigorously through the outer left hip as you descend through your right heel. Keep lifting through that right armpit. Feel the twist. And then you're going to step your left leg forward, low lunge twist, whatever way you want to do it. So keep turning your navel so that your chest starts to reach towards the left, even if your gaze is down. And then drop your right knee down, tip up, tip back. So I'm letting my hips come forward as I reach through my right side body. And I can just gaze down, I don't have to look. Okay, as you're ready, hands come down to the floor, step and fold forward, top of your mat, long spine, fold on exhale, arms reach all the way up. This time, sit back, chair pose. So as I sit back and I deepen my hip creases, I'll feel my heels press. I want to press the feet apart to get more space for my pelvis, and I'm going to twist to the right. Now what often happens is that left knee will come forward, so pull it back in so you do more work through your core. If you're able to, spread your arms to 6 and 12 so you can kind of pry your chest forward. So I want to really let the chest look, even if I'm up higher, it's totally fine. Bring both arms forward. Bring them into your heart. Twist to the left. Sit a little further down and then right arm to the outer left knee or thigh, left arm up, and then I try to press arm into thigh to pry the chest. I'm really working belly back, knees together. Then both arms up, straighten legs, fold forward. Long spine. Step on back with your right leg, low lunge twist. So as we have these repetitions, you can add bells and whistles if you want. You can change the pose, or you can just return to that familiarity. Knee down, tip up and back. Then as you're ready, we're gonna slide that right knee in so that the knee and the ankle are touching. I'm gonna use a block if I need to, to sit on. So I have my hip over my heel, my foot down. I'm gonna take the right arm up and I'm gonna twist to the left. So I'm using elbow to thigh. I can press into my left foot to give me some solid leverage to twist. I can look down, not important. One more breath. And the hands are gonna come down, we're gonna come into a standing split. So the hands can relax. I can use the earth to push down and away from so I can feel more lift. So feeling that reaching from your inner pelvis to your inner heel, your inner foot. That lifting of your pelvis through the right side, through your core. Then you're going to step the right leg back for warrior one. So take your time and we lift up. And we settle down. So it might be a bending and straightening a few times just to kind of ease on in. Bring the arms up to the side like a goal post to open through your chest. Let those shoulders draw down your back. Feel the core pull in. Keeping all that, bring your hands to meet at your heart. Hinge forward. And it's a twist. So I can either twist hold, holding up, I can twist touching elbow to thigh, and if that doesn't work, use a block and twist like you did in low lunge. Draw that left hip back and in, reach through your right inner thigh line. So whatever way you can twist and do this. Okay, on the exhale, both hands down. Move your block if it's in the way, plank pose. Nice deep breath, inhale, exhale, knees down, chaturanga. Cobra three times, take your time. Each time you try to pull the hands back and get a little longer, a little bit more chest lift, one more. 
and all the way down. Now lift your chest, tuck your toes, keep your core strong. So it's easy to lift the chest and let the belly relax. Keep the core strong. Maybe it's knees straight, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Adding a little bit in here, take your right leg up. Take it right knee to the right wrist. Put your shin down so that you're in kind of a pigeon pose, but you're, uh, you can be, uh, but you're not all the way down. And I'm gonna bend and straighten my arms a few times just to get my hips a little closer to the mat. And on the third one, I'm gonna allow my foot to reach back and I will go down. So I might need a block under my hip to go ahead and come on down. So just for the first few moments, let your right hip release towards the floor. Reach your left toes back. Let this be kind of a pausing, redirecting that energy into releasing. And then we're going to turn the left forearm so that my palm can either grab my knee or just reach towards my knee. Then my right hand can either come to my right thigh and kind of press it down to lift up. It can be one choice. Or if I'd like to, I can reach that arm up and back, grabbing outside the foot, thumb up. That can be a lot, so if that's too much, don't worry about it. Okay, one more breath. Let it go, nice and slow. Okay, go ahead and remove that block. And then as you're running, we're gonna kind of lift the upper back and we're gonna hop it into that low lunge. So if that didn't work, reset, okay? Go ahead and take your little lunge twist. Remember, you could add on or do anything different. And as you're ready, knee down, tip up and back. So just repeating and then we'll add on the new bit. Okay, as you're ready, cartwheel those hands down, slide your left knee towards your right ankle. I'm using a block, you certainly don't have to, you may not need it. Okay, left arm up, twist to the right. Belly back. So I'm kind of using my elbow and thigh to push together to lift the chest. Meanwhile, pressing down through my right heel to ground my body. So I feel that anchoring. Okay, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, hands to the mat, standing split. So instead of just kind of feeling yourself sink and get heavy, how do you kind of press into the earth with your hands and your feet to lift the energy up and to reach the energy out towards your left foot? You can be square or you can be more like I was, which is more half moonish. Okay, step that left leg back, warrior one style. So go ahead and come all the way up. Remember you want both hips forward, so you might need a wider stance. And so it's nice to bend and straighten a few times just to kind of let your hips settle into warrior one. Take a deep breath, arms reach up, and then goal post those arms to stretch open the chest and shoulders. Keeping the chest broad, the shoulders strong, hands to your heart. Hinge forward, reaffirm your legs, and then twist hovering, twist touching, or remember we had hand down, arm up, or here. There's so many options. I'm not so concerned about your arms, but more that you can feel the twist with strong hips, strong legs. Okay, take another deep breath or two. And then on the exhale, hands to the floor, step and fold forward. Take an extra moment here to relax. Let your spine release. Bend those knees slowly coming up. Okay, take a little mini squat. So bend the knees, not too big of a squat, just enough to hip hinge. And with your left leg, cross it on top of your right. I'm gonna just face you so you have a better vantage point. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm just squeezing out our shins. My toes are down. You can try and balance if you want. Arms to out, and then let's go right arm over left. If that doesn't work, prayer hands works, okay? 
As the forearms move up and forward, shoulders move down and apart, okay? Go ahead and turn your arms away from your front knee towards the left. So we're twisting here. Hip hinge a little bit more, sit the hips back, relax your head. Some of you might can let the arms fall to the floor. No, I'm sorry, that's not the floor, is it? That's your outer hip. And you might get a nice little stretch, but again, it might be too much. Three more breaths. Now find your right heel, find your core, so when you come up, you stay stable. Unbind, keep your eagle arms, widen your feet a bit, lift up, pour it forward, lift down, or release down. Then I like to kind of use my hands as kind of like weights to draw those shoulders away from my lungs so that my lungs get a little bit of relief. With all the smoke in the air, it can be really uh, laborsome for your lungs to try and bring in that uh, that oxygen, and so we want to just kind of give the lungs a little bit more space. Okay, unbind your arms, then those knees roll up. Side two, baby squat. Right leg over left, like you're sitting in a chair, cross-legged. You can use toes on the floor, toes on the block, or you can hover. Arms out, left arm over right, or prayer hands. No matter what you have, elbows move up and forward, shoulders move down and back. Make sure you're stable there. Then just nice and slowly move just your torso to the right so you feel a gentle twist. You could stay there. Or you could let the hips go back, go back as you drop the upper half forward. Think about like child's pose. So I like to find a focal point because it, otherwise it kind of feels like you could fall over. So maybe it's your center, maybe it's something on the floor that you're looking at. Okay, before you come up, lengthen through your tailbone, pull your navel up, slowly lift up. Unbind, oh, nope, sit, stay, stay, stay. I got, I got too excited and then pour it forward. Let it go. Okay, and bind the arms, slowly come up. Step towards the front of your mat. Left side, arms reach up. We're just repeating and slowly adding on. Fold forward. Long spine. Step on back with your left leg, low lunge twist. Can we just do this side? Man, it sure does feel familiar. Tip up and back. I really do feel like we did, didn't we? We did do this side. So we gotta do the right side. Somehow we already did the right. That was so, so weird. Okay, come back. <laughs> Arms reach up. Exhale forward, pull right leg back. You guys gotta keep me honest here. I'm pretty sure we did this. Did we? Somebody tell me if you remember. Knee down, tip up and back. Oh yeah, Jill, I love you so much. I think the only thing we're missing is, is, pigeon. Uh, is pigeon. Yeah, okay. Um, well, we'll yeah, so however you want to get there is awesome. Yeah, okay, we'll get there. Thank you. You know, sometimes I just lose track too. Yeah, it feels okay. even. I feel even. Okay, good. Knee in. Sit back. Okay, so we have knee and ankle, right? Right arm up and we twist. Nice deep breaths, churn your navel. Okay, you have some options for standing splits. So when you're ready, bring that block forward and either come into standing split or if you'd like to come in revolved half moon, drop your right hip down, take your left hand to the small of your back or lay it on your small of your back, forearm uh, down, palm up and twist. If you've had enough twists, standing split for three, two, step it on back, warrior one. Come all the way up. We won't get in and out. Exhale, open up. Yeah, but this is the right side now. I'm remembering. Okay, hands to the heart. Hinge forward. You're going to do your twist of choice. So that number that's hovering, left hip in and back. 
elbow down or low lunge. Now, no matter where you are, take a breath in and twist a little deeper breath out. Press into your feet, straighten your left leg, arms reach up. So go ahead and align yourself with perhaps a shorter stride. And then as you're ready, we're gonna exhale, we're gonna hinge forward, arms out like an airplane. Then take that left arm to the small of your back, take your right arm forward. Keep lengthening your body as much as you can, drawing that left hip back, and it's revolved triangle. So I'm gonna find the block, and I'm not gonna twist with my shoulder this time, let the shoulder relax. Twist from your core. Nice deep breaths. Okay, one more breath. And then as you're ready, you're gonna release your arm down to the floor. We'll re-bend that left knee, and then we'll come into plank pose. Okay, take a deep breath in plank. If you want your knees down, go ahead, drop to your knees, chaturanga to your belly. Three cobras. And all the way down. Now lift your chest up, tuck your toes, keep your core active, and it's plank to down dog. Nice deep breath. Okay, left leg lifts up. This time draw your left knee to your left wrist and set your foot down. And remember, we're not uh, lifting our hips down, we just do a few push-ups. And that won't feel like a too terribly uh, strenuous, hopefully. All the way down, knee down, and then go ahead and find your, your pigeon. So I'm going to use a block underneath my left hip so that I can anchor the left hip. That makes me feel a little more stable. I'll reach through my right toes. And then turn your right palm to face towards your left knee. And either just left hand tented as I turn to the left, left hand to the small of my back or my thigh, or I can reach my left arm back and I can grab inner or outer foot, depending on what works for me. And that's if that feels good for you. Okay, last breath. Okay, as you're ready. Slowly, slowly take your hands, lift your hips, and we're gonna to come to downward facing dog. Now we gotta do that triangle on the other side, so we do have another side to do. Nice deep breaths. Go ahead and step your right leg forward for that low lunge twist last time. Take your knee down, tip up and back. Then as you're ready, take the knee forward, sit on your block and we'll twist. Just take your time setting it up and not everyone will need a block. Sometimes it's just a little bit extra. Okay, as you feel ready, standing split or revolved half moon. So if I want revolve half noon, it's like a warrior three, but I turn and twist. So the torso moves, the hips stay square, just like the little lunge twist. Exit when you're ready into warrior one, taking your time. Arms reach up, goal post, opening the chest. Hands to the heart and we hinge forward and it's any type of warrior one twist.
And then everyone straightening your front arm, your front leg, shortening your stride if that's what you need. And then as I hinge forward, arms go out wide so that I free the chest. I'm going to inner rotate the right arm, lay the small of my back, and bring the left arm forward. So I'm still more like, you know, not even halfway down. And this is where I like to grab a block or fingertips so I can move the right hip back and turn and twist from my waist, not from my shoulder. So the shoulder on the right relaxes. Just a different version. For three. For two. And then when you're ready, both hands release down to the floor, and then we'll just step back down or facing dog. Let's take some grounding breaths. If child's pose is more appealing, go ahead and drop into child's pose. Okay, as you're ready, go ahead and drop to your knees. Sit on back for a moment. Just kind of resetting and go ahead and find that mudra that we've been working with, Kini Mudra. So everyone, this is test day. So this is the day that everyone's going to do the pose that they're working on. So I want you, before you work on it, to do the mental preparation to focus on your intention. So if you're working on a balance pose, is your intention how long you're going to stay? So I want you to imagine yourself in that balance pose with your staying power. Or maybe it's the uh, feeling like you can hold it with more vigor, more connection to the earth, your core. If you have a core pose, you're doing your plank challenge, which I will time. And so you're imagining yourself feeling integrated, strong, wrist feeling supported. If you have a pose like a headstand, that your roots become strong, strong foundations to lift from. Right? If you're doing a squat, Malasana, you're feeling the pubic bone balanced, thigh bones reaching outwardly, right? You're finding your edge. I think I named every pose. I, although I can't remember, Michelle, what your pose was, but everyone visualize your pose. Visualize how you'll feel in your pose. And then when you're ready, you have that good visual. I'm going to start the clock on those of you doing your plank challenge and go. So go ahead and practice your pose. I'm going to come watch. Okay. How was that? Good. Okay. Good. So take a moment, whether it's seated or on your back, just kind of take a moment to take all that in. That was awesome work. Really good stuff, you guys. Refocus. Reset. <sighs> kind of let it all settle in. And then when you're ready, we're going to be coming onto our backs. Finally, on our backs. So go ahead and either find knees wide or knees together. I kind of tend to like knees wide these days, holding on to the ankle, letting the heels drop down. Hmm. Letting the knees lay apart, letting the ankles roll. Kind of feel those the heaviness through the thigh bones. And then go ahead and place your feet flat on the floor. Cross your right leg over your left like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair. And then wiggle your legs over to the right. Lift them up and drop them to the left. Now, if you have a block or something to put under your bottom leg, go ahead and do that so that you can feel a little bit more restful. Spread your arms out, you can goal post them. If you want to kind of double twist, you can look to the right, otherwise just keep your, keep your gaze upward. And as you're twisting to the right, feel the legs heavy towards the left. Couple more breaths, nice and deep. 
and then kind of using your shoulders. So I'm going to bend my elbows so I can press up, keep the same crossing, neutralize your legs if you need to. And then drop your legs towards the right. This time, circle sweep your arm up so that your thumb points straight down and your palm faces your torso in a sense, or the side of your body. And then stretch your hips away from your wrist. Feel that whole left side waist open. And then once again, use your right arm to kind of lift your legs, then hold on to your front of your shins or your ankles and either pull the legs apart or pull your legs towards you. Deepen your breath. Feel the hips kind of settling towards the floor. And then uncross your legs. Let the soles of your feet meet, let your knees open. And then cross your right arm over your left, like your, your right arm over your left, like you're giving yourself a big hug and really reach your fingers back as far as you can. So that at first your elbows kind of lift up and away and you get kind of that broadening of the scapula and then just let the arms settle. And see when you breathe if you can feel with your hands your breath entering the upper regions of the lungs. So really direct your breath to the back of your body if you can. Just remembering what arm is on top. And then slowly loosen your arms just enough so that you hold your elbow crooks with your uh, thumbs. And then just let your arms like an old fashioned typewriter go across your body. Just kind of feeling that lubrication of the shoulders. Kind of roll with it a bit. And then take your arms up and overhead. It's okay if your elbows don't touch the mat. Just kind of feeling that spaciousness around the chest area, just like we did in a forward fold, almost like you're lifting any heaviness up off the lungs. Direct the breath into the front of your chest. And then let the arms go. Let them support the knees coming up. And then you're going to uh, take the left leg over the right leg like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair. Walk your legs over to the left. Then lift them up and drop them to the right. And if you have something to put under your thigh, it's always nice. It just lets you kind of rest a little bit more. So I can either turn to the left to get a double twist to my neck and cervical spine, or I can just look straight up. Kind of letting the legs settle to the right as I reach and open my torso to the left. So lots of space in the side lung area, hopefully. And then I'm gonna kind of use my elbows as props to lift my legs up. I can neutralize if I need to, dropping my legs to the left now. And then I'm gonna circle sweep my arms so the palm will face up and now the palm will face to the left side of the room. And I'm reaching my thumb away from my right hip. So I'm really trying to open through the right side of the body. Stretching and getting nice and long. And then as you're ready, using that left elbow, maybe the right, to continue to pry the legs back up. And then you'll hold on to the shins or the ankles, pull the either the ankles apart, or bring the legs towards you. Depends on your flexibility. Do watch for that chin jutting up. Sometimes you have to adjust the you know, ponytail holder, or you have to adjust your neck to the next one. Okay, really feel the weight of your legs kind of letting the low back stretch. Okay, 
Uncross your legs. Bring the soles of your feet together. Open up. And then again, make sure the opposite arm's on top, like you're gonna give yourself a big hug. Reach your arms as far to the back body as you can, like you're reaching for each finger, and then lift up for a moment to kind of feel that broadening action of the scapula, and then let it settle. And then you're directing your breath to the back of your body. See if you can feel your lungs expand. And soften as you exhale. And then like an old-fashioned typewriter, keep the same arm on top, you're grabbing your biceps, and then just letting the arms kind of rotate to the side, loosening up those shoulders. And then arms up and overhead. Letting that lightness come to the chest. And then letting your arms go, letting them lift your knees up. So kind of feeling into your body if there's a final inversion that you want to take, bridge pose, shoulder stand, headstand. I want to give you like a minute or so for um, any type of inversion work or further hip stretching. So if there was like a pose that you really felt like doing, feel free. And I'm going to show you the setup that I want you to kind of land in. And if you have that blanket, that's a great one to use, a couple of different setups. So you're doing your inversion of choice. That can be legs on a wall. I'm just gonna keep talking to you so you can kind of know your setup. So I can either roll the blanket and put this over my upper back so that I can, again, lift the chest, open, open up to the front of the shoulders. I could do this also with the block if I didn't have a blanket. Cross the upper back. Now my head would be hanging, so I tend to like another block for my head. Okay, so something to lift the chest. Okay, other option with the blanket if you have it is to lie onto the blanket. I'm gonna have a little bit of space between my sacrum. Lie back, I make a little notch for my neck. So give yourself about 30 more seconds or, you know, as long as you need in your inversion and then you're going to decide what you want to do for your Oh, I love that. Okay, friends, when you're ready, so the goal of that last final posture is to get the chest to lift so that you can, again, direct more of that breath to the front of the heart. So either on two blocks, lying on the blanket horizontally so that it lifts your upper back and arms out, or lying on it vertically so that you can get the whole body to kind of feel lift. And I do add a little notch for my head. So you can unmute yourself if you have any questions, but just see what would resonate. Your legs, they can be straight out front, they can be soles with feet together, knees wide, or knees knocked in. But you just want something that's gonna let you feel like you can give that heart some space. So dive on in to your final place of rest. And for the first few moments, just consciously relaxing every part of your body. So maybe you're gonna start at the head and just letting your brain relax back away from the front of your skull, letting your eyes relax back. Feeling your tongue relax, your jaw. Consciously relaxing the throat, the heart. Consciously relaxing the belly. Consciously relaxing the hips. The thighs. 
the ankles, the arms. Really let yourself settle. Just kind of imagining sediment settling to the bottom. Imagining those thoughts swirling around, the frenetic energy just starting to either move away or to settle in so that it gets absorbed by your depth of silence, of rest, of wisdom. Like this deepest part of you can absorb it. Can integrate it into the experience without losing your anchor. Without learning this sense of solidity, of stability. So the next couple breaths, just let that breath take you deeper into the settling. Inviting space for a deeper calm to enter. Just letting everything relax and rest. The doing, the monitoring, Letting yourself, in a sense, tune out and just settle in. Not having to think or plan or execute or decide. Just letting it all be there. The breath is natural, the body just relaxes. Like a powering down of your cell phone or your computer, that darkness, that stillness, Noticing what it's like to be in this stillness, this place of settling. And you may decide that you need more of that today and this weekend. Just kind of let yourself process and integrate what's all been happening so that you can return to the world in a more, again, whole, embodied, steady place. So imagining that you're turning the power back on and you're rebooting, but you don't have to open any of the apps that you're not ready to deal with today. So as you reboot that clean slate into your day, being really mindful on what you choose to open, what windows you can swipe closed, I remember my daughter used to say at night, it's like on my iPad screen, I've got too many windows open and they're all telling me things. And I thought that was a really wise way of describing how sometimes it feels when we try to focus on too much. So when we are in states of stress or overwhelm or kind of feeling like there's so much, right? Just focusing on one thing at a time. so that we are purposeful in what we do and that we can bring all of ourselves forward. So as you're slowly rebooting, wiggle fingers and toes, slowly allow yourself to come onto your side before maybe coming up to a seat. And if you wanna settle longer on your back, then you'll just let that happen. 
no need to explain it or justify it. Bringing your hands to meet at your heart, letting your head bow into your heart space, feeling into the effects of your practice, right? The tapas that's required to practice on not so energized days, on days when we wish we could just escape, on days when we'd rather just do something else, right? That we return and we practice in whatever way we can practice. And it's that, that, that way of dealing with ourselves in the world in a way that feels more aligned more mindful, more empowered. So thanking yourself for your efforts, thanking this community that supports us getting up and doing the work of our practice. Take a deep breath in to some gratitude, whatever it is today that you can uh, celebrate, whatever glimmer. Exhale it into your heart space. Breathing in your intention that all beings be happy and free. Breathing that out. And that we may be happy and free, free and contribute to that in the world. Breathe that in. Breathe that out. The light in me honors the light in you, friends. Thank you so, so much for showing up to yoga today, to our practice, for each other. I love you guys. You're the best. Namaste. Hmm. Hope to see 